buzzing, or maybe it's beeping, or alarm sirens in my ears, or whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter, and maybe I just slept through another alarm. Until the sun rises, I toss and turn in my sleep and spend the day with my legs twitching. And every full moon, I'm haunted by ghosts or echoes, or whatever, in the place of dreams. Disconnected, I search for who I was and try to map the blueprint so that I may build the bridge that connects the two, but God, that's dreary, God, that's dark. Wasn't there a time when I could run forward toward the sun and feel its warmth rejuvenating me? I used to be different, I'm sure of it, and my clothes fit differently and my hair falls differently now. I wear a new name to erase the corpse I was once fond of carrying. The beast I used to be was once beauty too, and once vibrant too. A lifelong reader, it was all about the book a day schedule and fantastical escapist daydreams. Now who can I say that I am if not the tower, collapsing and rebuilding in an endless cycle of torturous change, 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 exercise and fresh air and meditation, and drink 6.5 cups of water four times a day. Outside, the world is burning and people dying, and they say that ashes look a lot like snowflakes. Inside, you must measure your productivity and increase it by 26% each minute. Chase after the burning wanting and find salvation in the way your hands open and close each morning and do not mourn the years that have gone by in a gray haze. Ignore the pulse pulse pulsing like electric currents and ignore the knowledge it once flowed like a stream. Put my brain under a microscope and see the grooves and screwed frontal lobe that are the result of a lifetime of pain. Please, doc, take my blood and examine it. Trace the DNA. Turn off the tick, tick, ticking of this body or at least tell me what the countdown is for. That great dopamine rush always seems to elude me just before the finish line. My illness and my responsibility, I do my best to keep the drawers closed or I cram all of it inside to keep it away from them. Always unable to master the art of the slow reveal. It spills without my will and I will anyway bite the bullet they send my way to spare them the explosion of knowing out there people ache and suffer and there's nothing you can do about it. And yes, I remind myself my body is my temple and a place of sacred refuge that despite its violations still manages to go, go, go without battery. But will you watch as I batter myself to fit the mold and grease up with moisturizer in a 10 step routine and do it without skipping over the gory parts? Doctor says white blood cells rise and cortisol spikes, but they can't tell what's wrong with this version of me, this person I've become out of spite or in places I won't admit to them or myself out of necessity for survival. I promise if I could, I would just pick out a buffet of happy thoughts and kind faces, yet they'll still shake and twist in how burdensome it is to know I'm sick. Is this really what it's like to be who I am, or is this some show, some marvelous painting to glamorize death and fancify suffering? I've done it all right. I've done it all right and read every self-help book and bookmarked and highlighted all the parts that tell you how to be more socially palatable. Will I die unaccomplished and decrepit with nothing to show for all this bodily pain and grating, grating mind or prison of my own making? Scrape with plastic spoons trying to find a way into or out of this maze of my brain, but even my weapons break when pressed too hard. We're similar that way and even my once cutting vernacular has reached its final limits of apathy at others treating me poorly and accusations of forcing them to experience the intensity of my being still fly toward me like a bomb and my existence labeled a shock value device to scare my audiences and potential communities. It grows as stale as cardboard or grows as loud as the buzzing or maybe it's beeping or alarm sirens or burning every wick I was born with ending up with a grave two feet wide and six feet deep and buried the night before I turned 27. But it's not palatable to tell people you're watching yourself die.